A fault is a weakness, a defect, a fracture. Faults divide, tear, and consume. Here in the city of Chester's chasm, we struggle to maintain that precarious balance over the precipice in the earth, in our lives, and in our hearts. This story is about four teenagers with faults of their own. The fault between my faith and freedom. The fault between my family and identity. The fault between my choice and my obligation. The fault between my life and death. As these fractures grow, we stand at the edge and ask what must we sacrifice to sate the void's endless hunger? Is it possible that the answer lies within all our faults? Greetings, and welcome to All Our Faults, a Monster Hearts 2 actual play podcast. I am your MC and host, Mistress Winter. In our previous chapter, we discovered that Celine's hunter had followed her scent to Jacob and killed him in the school parking lot. However, Celine was a bit busy to notice, fending off an attack by Michael, whose predatory nature had come to bear. Crispin, spurred on by the injustice and presence of evil, ran home to enlist aid. Michael and Bert attempted to contact and explain things to Celine, who was running for her life in a state of panic. Stay tuned after the episode for special shoutouts and thank yous. Please enjoy. Chapter 11 Contextually Speaking We'll jump back over to Celine. You have received that text, and I want to bridge that communication. Can I be reminded what the text said? Yes. In short, it was basically, sorry for trying to murder you. The howling of that creature made me uncontrollably hungry. I just wanted to apologize and make sure you're okay. And I'll have Bert for safety. To be clear, I do not know you're a vampire. Yes? You know that I'm something at this point. I know that you're something, but like it's... He, <laughs> no one has said, I have not had the thought, Michael is a vampire. Yeah, no one has said that yet. And oh, I will say, you would have probably seen my fangs. And I imagine my eyes get redder when I'm about to feed. So, because I wasn't hiding it, you probably would have seen it. So you might have jumped to conclusions, but you might be confused. Michael is presuming, if you don't know, you could guess. I definitely haven't made the connection yet. Doesn't mean I won't. I'm just still coming out of my darkest self. So I haven't quite made that connection. Totally reasonable. Yeah, I just wanted to put that out there. So at least we both are on the same page. Okay. I will freeze on the street reading the message take a look around and as the adrenaline is starting to wane other emotions are coming up anger frustration heartbreak at everything that happened with crispin fear that's still ever present there curiosity of what was going on and just utter bewilderment about what took place between us michael and so i will send a text back that just says yeah what the fuck was that? We should talk. Okay. And he'll respond with, uh, let me know, and I'll make sure Bert's around. You'll get a thumbs up back. Bert, when do you have to be home? Well, my dad and I are on a kind of a rocky thing, so I think whenever. I don't, I don't really have a set time. I don't really want to be back there at the moment. Do you have a certain time you need to be? <laughs> Not really. No one really pays attention. Do you want to ride? Yes, I do. Where Where are we going? Well, you can text Celine and ask if she wants to meet now or if she wants to wait. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We have each other's number. So I'm just going to, hey, Celine, it's Bert. I'm with Michael. I hope that's cool. I think we need to meet and talk about what what's going on. Question mark. Shrug emoji. Bert is such a mood. <laughs> <laughs> in, in such stark contrast to Michael, and I love it. Mm -hmm. But you will receive in response just now with like four question marks. 
I'll text back. I think so. I don't know. While we're all here, Michael's ready to meet you and talk about it. I think we need. Do we need Crispin? Does Crispin need to be brought in on this? Wait, probably not. Did she want to meet now? She said now, four question marks. So I think she's available. Ask her if she wants to now or tomorrow. Okay, I'll text back. I like you. I was like, I was like texting all those that I was saying, and I'll just erase that, and I'll be like, uh, it now is good for us. If it's good for you, I'll make sure Michael doesn't eat you. <laughs> and I'll like hide my phone from Michael. I'll be like, uh, let, let me see what she's saying. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> As we're like walking to the car, I love this. Yeah, I'll respond back. I just got home, so probably tomorrow. Michael, she said tomorrow. Sounds good. Does that work for you? Sure. That's fine. Cool. Uh, yeah, tomorrow works. I'll text back. And you will receive a thumbs up emoji. Shit, I still don't know Jacob is dead. That'll be fun. No, you do not. And I'm just presuming you know, so I'm not bothering. Well, if that's the case, I guess I don't need to eat dinner tonight. Wait, that wasn't your plan, was it? No, no, I told you. Okay, well, first we need to make a quick, you and I need to make a quick pit stop detour. Where? And I'm going to reach in my pocket and pull out the two coins and grab Michael's hand and then like fall back like I do because I can bring one person to my gate to the underworld thing. Ooh, okay. What the hell? Before you know what's happening, Michael, you're falling forward with... Bert falling backward and darkness just rushes up to consume the both of you when your eyes adjust, which they do quickly considering or your vampire sight can cut through darkness pretty easily. You find yourself in what looks like a shack, kind of ramshackle. There's a desk, there's a huge slate of stone in which things have been pinned up by magnets. And when you further get your bearings, you look out of the window. It's a stark contrast and it's hard to make out, but you think you see waves, the turbulent waves of a river outside. Bird? Yeah? What the hell is this? We are somewhere in between life and death and kind of the plane. This is some of my abilities in that accident we had, and I just wanted to tell Death and their associates that we're not part of this. We'll investigate, and I just want to clear your name first before, because I don't know, you do what you do, and you kind of fed on the person, so if another agent of Death or Death itself is looking around and sees your little fang marks in Homeboy's neck, that could reflect badly on you. Okay. There aren't any fang marks, by the way. You might just not want to mention anything, and then we're fine. Wait, how did you do it then? You lick it, and then it goes away. Duh. That was never covered in any of... Anyway, anyway, anyway. Is Mr. Amuto around? He is not. Oh. Well, that's going to be hard to communicate this. Okay, I just want to, like, pin a note, because he pins stuff on my board. So, like, his area of my hideout, I will put, like, a note just like, Mr. Amuto... The cycle has started here. I'm investigating. Disregard Michael's involvement in this. I don't think he's a part of this. And then I will, after writing the note, I'm like, okay, he'll get this. Well, I'll talk to him in person and clear your name. And then I'll put my hand on his shoulder and like teleport us back, fall forward. Again, before you even have a chance to react, Michael, you are pushed backward and land heavily on the concrete. Oh. I guess I could have warned you. Sorry about that. It was just, it was a rush. Yeah, that's a word for it. Crispin, you are with your dad on your first hunt together. Where are you hunting? Where are you directing him? I've told him about the two incidents I know of at school. The one that just happened that resulted in a death and then the howling that I heard previously outside the lunchroom that caused me to go do some reading in the library. So I know that the school is a hotbed for whatever is happening 
So that is kind of the only lead that I have. So that I suppose that is where I would direct my father. Give me a gaze into the abyss. Oh, boy. Unless you think one of your night abilities might prove more useful. Yeah, no, neither of my abilities would help. So gaze into the abyss is dark. Yes. Okay. Oh, that's going to be bad. That's a four. Your dad circles the school, leaning on you for vigilance and guidance on where he should direct your hunt. Aside from the spectacle in the parking lot, everything else seems peaceful. And you can feel that your father is growing impatient. Are there still like cops and stuff around? Like, is the body still there? No, they have transported it. Though there are a few cops taking statements. I'm trying to decide if my dad is pro-cop or anti-cop. Ooh. Yeah. I feel like an argument can be made either way. Or I guess let me ask this. Are any of the cops around affiliated with my church? Yes. Then I will point him out to my father and say, you know, maybe we can get a little bit more information or at least give someone a heads up that something is happening. Your father nods and pulls into the parking lot, which is emptied to some extent as the dance goers who didn't see the initial attack, had nothing to do with it, and are done ogling the scene, have taken off. As my dad is parking the car, I'm going to look around and just see if there's any sign of Deacon and Deanna. Because I know Deanna had asked me out to this dance. So presumably she was planning on coming. I don't know if she did come or if she would even still be here. Deacon and Deanna are there and they are consoling a sobbing Taylor. In that case, I will just do my best to not draw their attention uh, and hope that they're busy. Roll to keep your cool. That's a six. Nice. I'm doing great. You know those times where you just don't want to be seen and you project it with your thoughts as loudly as you can out into the universe, like, don't look at me, don't look at me, don't see me, don't see me, don't see me. And how often it seems to do the opposite. Yes. That's what happens here. You're, don't don't look this way, don't look this way, don't look this way. And Diana's eyes sweep across the parking lot and catch you heat-seeking missiles, and they are just as pointed. Yeah, that feels about right. Does she recognize my dad? Oh, yes. Great. And that is the only thing that is keeping her where she is instead of confronting you. Cool, 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 cool. I guess I, I just turn my attention to my dad and what we're doing and talk to this cop. Your dad approaches Greg Fields, He's a veteran to the police force in Chester's Chasm. He's not a high-ranking member. He's still a patrol officer, but he has a few years under his belt. But he's been a lifetime member of the Church of Eternal Vigilance. They share a quick word of greeting. Your dad says something to the effect of, Vigilant, you stand. And Greg says, forever in his name. What brings you here? My son has some knowledge of what happened here tonight that he is going to share. And your father turns to you. That was not the plan. Officer Fields regards you. What is it, son? And I, I look to my father and straighten my back and just say, Officer Fields, I was here earlier tonight when Jacob was discovered. There have been whispers that it was an attack by some kind of animal, but I don't think that can be true. There's been signs in the past days a howling in the distance that cannot be of this world or above, so could only be from below. I appreciate you telling me. If you'll forgive, I have a hard time believing that some great evil has come to Chester's chasm. The sigil remains. And he looks to your dad for confirmation, who just gives a nod. The sigil is unbroken. Evil things are not permitted here. How often do evil things do only what they are permitted? God's will is the wall that keeps them out. And as long as that sigil 
stays unbroken, then we are assuredly protected. God's will is the wall, and we are the bricks, Officer Fields. I don't believe that it was God's will for this boy to die tonight. Do you know of any wild animal who could do what was done to that body? Silently, with no witnesses, while dozens, maybe hundreds of people were feet away. We will stand in judgment if we do not act as we are called to do. And Crispin's going to turn to his father and say, The sigil may be unbroken, but the workings of evil are relentless in their pursuit of destruction. Perhaps they have found a way to circumnavigate the protections we have put in place for generations. It's worth looking into. We are men. We are fallible. We could have made a mistake. Give me... Shut someone down. Oh, shit. On my dad? Or on uh, Officer Fields? No, the, on Officer Fields, yeah. Oh, that's less fun. What is that, cold? Yes. Someday I'll remember. Uh, so it is a nine. So on a seven to nine, you choose one of these options below, but you come across poorly and you gain a condition in return. So you can choose to gain a string on Officer Fields. Fields gains a condition or you take a forward. I'll take a forward. Okay. I will give you the condition. This is so ironic. Boy who cried wolf. Ouch. <laughs> that was rude. So rude. Officer Fields engages you from a different avenue of conversation. I understand that you strongly believe in what you may have witnessed and trust in us that we will have the truth of it out. We will figure out what happened to this poor young man. But rest assured that you are safe. And congratulations, by the way. He motions to your club. Thank you, sir. It's a great honor. I hear that you're completing your first vigil tomorrow. I hope it goes well. And that you see the sigil in all its glory. And know that he above is standing vigil with you. Yes, sir. Have a good night. As they're walking back to the car, I think... Crispin's shoulders slump in defeat. He was so sure when he took off from the scene of Jacob's death that his dad was going to know the answer. That, you know, this was some great evil. And that I think very much like a little child that daddy had all the answers. And the reality that he doesn't and nor did Officer Fields. Not only that, but they didn't entirely believe him. I think just makes him feel even more lost and confused and with a sense that he just can't do anything right. And the harder he tries to fit in at school and the harder he tries to fit in at church and at home, the more he feels utterly alone. Your dad will take you home. While the hunt was disappointing. He doesn't seem angry. He does ask for your club just for the night, and he will present it to you again tomorrow for your vigil and bid you a good night. Before we part ways, I think Crispin will start to go and he'll turn back to his father and go, does it always feel like this? Disappointing when you are not successful in your righteous cause? He ponders that for a moment. There has been no failure. Here, a guard who does not sound the alarm when a threat is perceived is one who is not vigilant, who does not have the best interests of their charge at heart. So be not disappointed, for you have assured that we are safe and that good still reigns. And should that threat ever come again, we will be ready. I think that's the nicest thing uh, Crispin's dad has ever said to him. That's the closest to an attaboy uh, I'm ever going to get. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to eat it like a little snack. And yeah, Crispin will just take himself to bed. I think despite himself, he is comforted by his father's words and he'll fall asleep after a long time of staring at the ceiling, pondering the change in him from this morning when he openly defied his father at breakfast to this evening when they hunted together and his father almost told him he did a good job. Oh, <laughs> You know, what a difference a day can make. Bert and Michael, where are you going? What are you doing? Yeah, I just wanted to just clear your name just to, to get ahead of this. I don't 
death is very logical. And so maybe just seeing the clues and seeing some of the, the way things shook out tonight may not look favorable upon you. And you might be suspect number one. But you, you said, you do you know this thing? You said the howl affects you in some way. It does. And um, Michael is going to reach up and put his hand on yours on his shoulder and just gently graze it. Yeah. When the howling starts, I find myself getting more hungry and a bit full of bloodlust, I guess. It's hard to describe, but it feels like tunnel vision, and I then need to seek out a tastier bit of prey. And Celine's really tasty. What makes her different? Is there something special about her? Do you, what, do, do you know anything? I can't quite put my finger on it. I'm not familiar with it, but it's alluring. Okay. Normally, I find myself going after male prey, but there's something about her that's different. She's not like other girls. Okay. Also, is is Harker part of this? What do you mean? I don't know. You were kind of like, he was kind of... I don't know how to explain it, because when I talked to him, I talked to him earlier, and he had, like, all the knowledge about botany and biology and stuff, and then all of a sudden you show up, and he can't, like, string two sentences together. I don't, I don't know if, is he part of this? Is he, like, on your menu? I don't, I don't know how you guys work. Vampires, do you have, like, a... I think I need to roll to keep my cool. <laughs> okay, please do. <laughs> oh, shoot. Okay, so... Got to scroll up to my my the stats. All right. Okay, good. That is an eight. Seven plus one. All right. So we are in that juicy. But I'm. Ch- mm. Haha. <laughs> yeah. Gotta love a rim shot. What are you afraid of in this moment? Acknowledging my vulnerability and probably also the awkwardness of acknowledging I like someone who's not Bert to Bert. Ooh, sure. But more the first. By revealing your crush, your borderline obsession with William Harker, you give Bert a way to hurt you, which would be justified considering such an admission may hurt him. So you may decide to continue with this admission or backpedal. Uh, he's just... I, just, I ran into him in the hallway. It was really awkward earlier today. Oh, okay. Like I fell on top of him. It was really uncomfortable. All right. Okay. Yeah. And I think Bert in this moment isn't like thinking about all that. I think it'll hurt later. But like he is like, okay, there's a mystery. There's clues. This is what I do. I solve these things. Like the cycle of life and death has started. I need to stop it. And like his main priority was to getting Michael's name off the list. At least like clearing his name. Like, hey, he's not in this so he's just like wait you're going for celine what's going on with that is harker who's harker like what, what like not even like in that sense of like your crush but just like it's who's connected wait what's going on like all the dots so he's just like, okay yeah you ran into him he has nothing to do with it great the less the amount of people that are involved in this the better but yeah i just thought his, his reaction to you was interesting i don't know and to change the subject michael is going to try to turn you on okay roll that hot and he's going to lean in. Oh, that's an eight. It's six plus two. So success with some consequences. I love those. Yeah, me too. Michael's going to not, but I am. Okay, so Bert, you have the option to either give Michael a string or choose one of these reactions. You give yourself to him. You promise something you think he wants or you get embarrassed and act awkward yeah so because michael grazed your hand i think what he's gonna do is as we're talking he's gonna then reach for like your elbow and drag his hand up the back of your arm and along your neck you know we could go back to the lighthouse if you wanted do you know how many reenactment actors are there just hanging out ordering pizzas it's it's not really like a secluded spot like you think it is but i think i'm going to act embarrassed and awkward. So I'm just going to back up because like all of that that I've seen tonight and like I knew that there was something up with them because we were both in that accident, but like how far he can go to even like attack one of his friends. Uh, 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 actually, you know what? 
I'm tired. It's been a long day. Okay. Uh, right. That food on the table was kind of gross, and I think I had a sip of that lemonade, and it's kind of messing with my stomach. So okay, I'll bring you home. Celine said she was going to meet us tomorrow, so I guess we can tomorrow, right? Like we can all meet up and talk about this. Yes. Okay. Cool. I'll bring you home then, if you, if that's what you want. Uh, no, it's cool. My bike is somewhere that way, so I'm gonna find that. You, you sure? If if you feel safe. I mean. I can teleport myself to, like, the in-between dimension. So if something comes to me, I can just hide out there for, like, a second, so... Okay, then. Well, then I'm gonna go. Right. You you be safe. I don't know what protections you have against dark things. I am the dark thing. It's fine. Sure. Yeah, so I guess I'll we'll see each other tomorrow, and do you think we should tell Crispin? I don't... Let's talk to Celine first, and then worry about that later. Okay, yeah, because, I mean, they're close. So, like, they would know, like, what's going on there. Yeah, okay. So, I guess instead of, like, you be safe, like, make sure other people are safe, like, don't attack. Anybody would be my input on us leaving. Okay. Cool. Well, later. Mm -hmm. See you tomorrow, I guess. Did we discuss a place to meet? Are we meeting somewhere? Is there a spot? School. Or wait, what day is it? It's Saturday tomorrow. Well, We'll text. Yeah, that, that could work. Text. Sure. I don't eat food, but I don't know. We'll figure it out. I was thinking lunch, but then that made no sense. Just, I'll, I'll text you. Yeah, tomorrow. Uh, bye. Bye. All right. That was so deliciously awkward. Oh, uh, it was uh, cringeworthy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Friday night, Michael, you return home, making sure to scroll the car away around the block and to come around. You are aware that a lot of cars are passing by as you walk toward your house. You hear engines starting up, doors closing. Sounds like the party is over. Oh, thank God. You come up to your house as the last half dozen or so people are lingering around talking before they head to their various vehicles. There is one vehicle that you recognize immediately, as well as the driver. Oh, no. And to confirm your suspicions and to your horror, Mr. Vega shakes hands with your father as he heads toward his vehicle. Uh, I might need to roll to keep my cool. (laughs) Go ahead. Oh, no. Oh, no, that's a four. Oh. Oh, my God. That means I can't, I'm not going to be able to hide. I'm just going to stand there slack-jawed, like out in the open. Vega absolutely spots you as you linger out front of the lawn and beckons you over. Uh, I'll nod and walk forward. Uh, hello. Good evening. I, uh, trust you've had, uh, an exciting night? It was... A lot. Um, I am surprised to see you here. Uh, Yes, well, I never turned down an invitation to such a wonderful social event. Is everything fine inside? Yes, everyone seemed to have a good time, I would say. Okay. May, May I go? For now. However... I have a job for you. Yes. What? I have a special guest coming into town tomorrow. I need someone to show him around. Uh, Understood. Is there anything I need to know? Simply that he is uh, fond of his privacy. And I know that you are so good with uh, keeping secrets. Yes, I will be there. Let me know the time and place. I will go. Have a good night. Thank you. And he will slip into his vehicle alone. And I will pause and walk inside, hoping to avoid mummy dearest. Your mother is not there. Your father is directing the housekeeper to clean up the food and and glasses that have been left. I'm going to go upstairs and just make sure Gideon is okay. 
Okay. You find Gideon's door is closed. Locked. Locked is good. Okay. I won't wake him then. And I will go hide in my bedroom and freak out. Okay. Saturday. Yes, after not sleeping and pretending to eat breakfast. Mom is home, Michael, and is in the kitchen in a very silky bathrobe getting coffee. Hello, Mother. When did you get in? About as everyone was leaving, there was a somewhat traumatizing event at school last night, if you haven't heard. I've been otherwise disposed, but I'm sure that I will get wind of it at the office. Yes, a student was killed by an animal of some kind. Killed at your school? During the dance, yes. A friend-ish. I think we need to talk about taking you somewhere else, then. I don't feel as though my safety is at risk at this point. Where would I go? There are a number of private schools that offer much better security. Perhaps. I'm not worried as of yet, but I appreciate the concern. Don't get me wrong. I don't want anything to happen to you. Thank you, Mother. But it does not reflect well on the school's reputation, and thus our association, that a child was killed there. No, I understand. I will keep you informed. Good. I'm going out, uh, meeting with friends. I will be back later. Very well. Have a good day, Mom. You as well. She will go back to pouring her coffee and fixing up her espresso. Michael will text Bert and see if he's awake and text Celine and see if she's awake and I guess start walking to his car while he figures out who's alive. Celine, like, doesn't sleep, so she's awake. Either. He was just, like, going over all the clues, like, trying to map it out. He has, like, a weird, like, styrofoam, like, map he's trying to make of the, like, location, like, trying to figure out all, like, points of enter and exits and stuff like that of the parking lot. Bert, in text, are you ready to go out and find Celine? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. Did we know if we said where, where we were going to meet? And he'll just text, I'll pick you up and we'll go find her and make sure she gets a text too. And um, Michael will then send a text to Celine that just says, hey, you up? Not the hey, you up text. You'll get a text back that just says, yep. Gonna grab Bert. We'll head your way. What is your address? It takes kind of an awkwardly long time for the text to come in because truly Celine is considering whether or not she wants to share her address with you not even because of what happened yesterday but no one at school really knows where she's from except for people that are also living in the same area and so she will just be really hesitating but finally I'll send you the text with my address And you will immediately know that it is in the mall, and therefore the not-so-nice part of town. Well, that's easy. That's not far from Bert. And he'll go swing by Bert. And I guess when I get there, Bert, I will shoot you a text that says, I'm here. Rush out of the door with all of his, like, maps and and gear, (laughs) because I think we're on the, the, you know, the killer is close, so Bert is in, like, full preparation mode. He's got all of his gear, backpack trudging out like okay i'm here i'm here like a huge tumbler full of coffee downing it as he's running you know we're not climbing everest we're just going to see celine right and we don't even know what it is so i just brought all of you know all the stuff that i have that can fight monsters so i've just i'm prepared i'm ready uh okay well thanks and uh he'll peel out of the driveway in his (laughs) vastly too expensive vehicle and make it over to celine Celine's house is quite small. It's a small two-story house. All the houses kind of look the same. It's lots of apartment buildings. It's, it's, it's definitely the poorer area of town, but there's a lot of vibrancy to a lot of the places around. There's definitely a lot of art. 
artsy type things surrounding her building in particular. And she'll be waiting on the front steps when you guys pull up. I'll park right on the curb and then uh, get out and walk over tentatively. Hey. Hey. I am sorry about yesterday. We need to talk, I think. Uh, yeah, talking would probably be a good idea. Bert's along as well. Bert I was gonna get out, but then when he saw that Michael and like Celine like were having like a talk, he kind of like just kind of adjusts himself, like he was wasn't trying to get out and just kind of waves from the car. Like, okay, I guess we can go somewhere else if you want to do that, or we can stay here. Up to you. I'll look kind of back at the house and like in the window that's near the front and you can see into like the kitchen dining room area where my sister and my stepdad and my mom are all having small breakfast together. And so I'll just kind of look back and then look at you and just, uh, not here would be good, probably. Okay, here, uh, come into the car. We'll go somewhere, I don't know. I... I don't know how to just say this, so I'm just going to say this. I am not normal, and I don't think you are either. Very specific, Michael. Um, yeah, I, I gathered that you're not normal from last night. Hmm. Yeah, there's something around that makes me hungry for you, and I don't know what it is. Are we in the car? Are we still on my front porch? I think we're walking to the car. Okay. I'll be looking around, like, erratically as we're walking to the car. And then just kind of look at you and it's like, we we should have this conversation in the car. Yeah, that's fine. Bert knows about me. I think he's a little clueless about you. Yeah, most people are. Hmm. And uh, getting in the car. Where do we go? Considering that is the doorway between the realms, and I feel like that's the best way to explain things, I would say. Uh, the Cascade, pretty private. Um, people aren't usually there. Sure. Uh, seatbelt, I assume you need one. And he'll peel right off. I will buckle my seatbelt. Thank you for listening to this episode of All Our Faults. Thank you to the Tabletop Tailspinners Network for our home, and a special thanks to director Emma Kokar for her assistance with this episode. Shout out to our social media queen, Juicy Garland. You can find our cast of All Our Faults out and about in social media land. Abby Marie Carter can be found at Abby underscore Marie underscore Carter. Ben at DJ underscore Blindian. Juicy Garland at Juicy Garland. Kat Kelly at Kat Kelly Social, and myself at G Mistress Winter. Let us know that you're listening and what you think of the show. Drop us a rating and a comment. We'd love to hear from you. That's it for this episode. We'll see you in a couple of weeks, and we wish your hearts love and safety. And I will pause and walk inside, hoping to avoid Mummy Dearest. The awkward moment when you know your daddy fucked your dad. (laughs) I wasn't going to think about that. Yeah, you were, though. (laughs) But I was. You were, though. This has been a tale from the Tabletop Tailspinners Network.